Yeah. So hello everyone. My name is uh, Matteo Tambussi. I am one of the organizers of ETH Turin, which is um, the first um, Italian hackathon of Ethereum and possibly the first real Ethereum hackathon to focus on local impact. So um, a quick presentation of who I am, etc. I'm I, I'm a musician basically, so <laughs> I had to find some other jobs. So I started doing blockchain. No, I'm kidding. Um, I worked in Berlin as an audio video curator for Live Peer, which is um, a protocol based on Ethereum that takes care of decentralized audio video transcoding. So we are talking about censorship resistant. Um, audio video transcoding and uh, we had a um, community channel in Berlin called Live Peer TV which basically took care of the um, live streams for Ethereum Foundation, Dapcon, ETH Berlin, Devcon 4, blah 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 etc. So in time building I managed to um, understand um, like the macro bricks that make up like the, the, the UX, UI of, of blockchain experience and a bit of architecture. And I started like gathering more information and starting my own projects. And now I am basically here organizing ETH Turin. ETH Turin, uh, the idea of ETH Turin started at ETH Berlin 2 last year in Berlin, where we some other people from Radical Exchange um, Foundation, we were volunteering there. Uh, and we sort of, I don't know if you guys remember, it was like August uh, last year and basically the headlines were all about Amazon on fire, like this, like hundreds of hectares every day getting burned, etc. So we had this on the headlines and I was also in, the, in managing the panels of the jury at the end of the hackathon. We could see that there was no relation between the hacks and and SDG goals or like impacts, sustainability impacts. So with a bunch of people, we decided, okay, let's launch something that it's strictly towards that. And this is what we've been trying to do the whole year. Of course, Ethereum was supposed to happen physically at a local location um, here in, in, in Northern Italy, Turin. And, um, but we are in a strict quarantine. So we were one of the first people, organizations to say, okay, let's go, let's go virtual. And fortunately, thanks to Kai, thanks to Michael, and thanks to all of the organizers, we, we found this amazing um, environment to, to, to make Ethereum happen. So Ethereum will eventually happen on interspace in between the 24th and 26th. Of, of April this month. So I would love to go to my presentation because Ethereum is all about local adoption and local impact. Can you people see? Yes, we can. Okay. So um, this is just a quick list of the main partners that uh, populate our environment, of course, NonCon and Interspace. Diora that is taking care of the quadratic voting system for the winner of the hackathon, Mintbase, where you can, of course, um, retrieve and redeem your tokens. And then we have the University of Turin and this logo, which never appears, I don't know for which reason, but it's the Polytechnic University of Turin and the Italian community of Ethereum, Ethereum Italia. So let's kick in with some um, uh, header about what Turin is all about. For those who don't know Turin, Turin is a 700K uh, people um, town in the northern uh, uh, west of Italy, close to France. We hosted the 2006 Winter Olympic Games. It's the headquarters of Fiat industry. So it's a motor city town like um, Detroit somehow. So we have this heavy industry and tech um, soul along with more 
green and sustainable um, 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 aspect, which is basically represented by the slow food movement. For those of you who know um, Italy, Italy is a sort of uh, zero kilometers uh, food retail that is happening, uh, that is opening up around the world, and it, its headquarters are in Piedmont here in Turino. We also host Terra Madre, which is the biggest festival of <clears throat> local production, local food productions, etc. On the ICT level, <clears throat> if Turin, um, Turin is the um, birthplace of the MP3 late in, in, uh, in the 90s. So let's dive into what we are talking about with If Turin. Somehow, um, <clears throat> We've been talking about, um, we've been trying to kind of destabilize the concept of mass adoption for crypto and trying to propose another paradigm, which is basically local adoption. Um, so it's, it's all about uh, creating um, dynamic and uh, uh, inf mutual influence between the crypto nomads and the crypto dwellers. So those who are um, <clears throat> like startups and local businesses who are aware what blockchain possibilities are, but don't have the tools and uh, insight that crypto nomads um, traditionally have. Also without the crypto uh, prefix, uh, historically nomads are a population like um, migrating technology and know-hows to dwellers and then usually it's within the dwellers that some incremental innovation happens so this dynamic um, is somehow <clears throat> uh, pinpointed into first plugging into local test lab communities that can provide useful kpis because they can provide simple testing with uh, small numbers and high um, and, and close interaction. So we are talking about interaction that is uh, offline and online at the same time that can produce incremental innovation. For example, I wanted to. It's not. It's it's not an on-chain. Um, example but the real scale the, the, the real factor that granted airbnb its um, success apparently was that at a certain point airbnb uh, asked all its uh, early adopters to take professional photos so basically airbnb provided professional photographers to the first um, um, community of um, of hosts on on their website to start, uh, indeed, to start giving out like clear, nice, uh, fisheye <laughs> images of their, of their, of their apartment. So this is something that you can do once you have, um, like teams working in place. Like you know the people, you can get around with, um, with, with the with with the, with, with, with the local scene. Also talking about local public administration, um, there's this something that um, somehow I, this is this is something that I've been talking about we, within radical exchange, and there is um, decentralization doesn't mean um, not harmoni harmonization with the local administrations. In fact, the local public administration are as thirsty of decentralization from the central governments possibly as uh, crypto communities are because they have different needs than what the central government usually issue their um, regula um, regulatory sets on so we are talking about local agendas and um, they also have more freedom to integrate um, local taxes in uh, in their policies. So we, we will be talking about integration of local taxes, CAT, and token economics soon. And um, 
also they provide basic services like um, schools and uh, nurseries etc so it's it's important to rely on local public administrations as a as a um, by as a gate to to these localized impact also um, the um, local impact and local these local test labs provide a variety of non-monetary payoffs that can uh, fulfill better needs so we are talking about for example local uh, defi or micro defi so the possibility of citizens to stake value to local businesses which have um, registered address on a for example on a on a local fork of blockchain and um, thus local businesses can provide different kind of payoffs because of the proximity they can issue um, engagement uh, benefits that are not purely crypto this is something that we've been talking about concerning sdg so for those of you who don't know sdg um, sdg stands for sustainability development goals and are the 17 um, goals issued by the UN. So somehow um, these goals lack uh, a bit of precise and clear cut. So it's kind of hard to identify which kind of SDG to pursue in your uh, um, national or local agenda. This is why we thought it could be a good strategy to start talking about localizing the priority of SDG. This is a map that somehow I uh, retrieved um, with some data concerning um, with, with headlines basically and uh, what we've been f finding that is that for example cities like Stuttgart in Germany, Torino and um, Milano, my, my, Milan, they share basically the same um, emergency or the same priority for for the goal number 11 which is sustainable cities and communities both all these three cities they share high uh, rates of pm 2.5 and pm 10 so uh, in these these three cities could cre create basically a cluster of priorities that can um, interact that can make these three cities interact for a common goal So, uh, talking about SDG and development tracks in general at ETH Turin, we will have um, uh, a few bounty talk, a few, few bounty, sorry, a few bounty um, tracks issued by our partners. But the main track of ETH Turin is a S ESG, which stands for Environment, Social, and Governance, and SDG tracks. We have decided to just try to narrow the scope of this hacking by adopting a local uh, example. Uh, Commonsud. Commonsud is a project by the University of Turin Department of Computer Science, and uh, it's basically um, an Ethereum based um, protocol to that tries to connect crypto economics to circular economy so i don't know if you can see the map this is uh, like all hotspots mapped so far on the common zoo map and um, they are basically um, developing new uh, use cases for the city of Turin as well as for now they're opening new partnerships with the city of Athens and uh, Paris. They had last year um, a sort of um, test MVP with um, low-income families from Torino they issued some tokens and they distributed these tokens in the in, in the city's map. These tokens 
could be retrieved and redeemed by um, pre-selected low-income families. So also here we have the participation of the, the public administration to it. And uh, these tokens could be redeemed by uh, performing volunteering work. So talking about gar um, public gardens or, uh, you know, um, taking care of the common good, etc. Um, these tokens that commons who issued allowed these low income families to have tax cuts on uh, local taxes, such as uh, garbage tax, for example. So here we have a good uh, example of how a blockchain a Ethereum based project uh, managed to collaborate with a local public administration that has more freedom to engage into new um, um, new kinds of proposals than central governments. So basically, we will use um, common suit as an environment for implementation and further integrations we have a few mvp as a suggestions for the developers of course the all the developers are welcome to join our discord channel and uh, soon um, discover new possible uh, tracks of development also we are trying to gather as much funding as possible to have prizes for these SDG tracks. So one, the first possible um, track is um, focusing smart commuting. So Turin, as I said, is a car culture um, urban system. We, um, the city has been receiving funds to create a efficient public transportation system since the 60s but these funds have been refused by the local elite which is basically fiat an automobile industry elite for 40 years only when uh, the the big chief of the family basically died uh, we started having more of an opening towards smarter solution now we have only one line of metro and suddenly everyone is talking about smart commuting etc for example we now have this year we opened up the <clears throat> how to call it the band the um, the permission to e-scooters service providers we have nine different scooters service providers and i think 15 bike sharing providers so um, as you, I don't know if who of you is from Berlin, but Berlin is a bit similar case where there's a, there's a high misuse of of these resources. So you get these bikes left and basically get getting wasted in the in the canals or in the gardens, and the scooters being parked everywhere without. Um, any kind of, of care. So all these little misbehaviors from the community disincentivize smart community, uh, smart commuting services. And they, that's because they simply raise the costs of uh, logistics. So what we've been talking with, with the local administration is to create a um, shared wallet system to end a reputational system to create a sort of a token curated registry and a code of conduct for users of scooters and bike sharing. Um, this is basically just wallets that interacts with GPS and um, somehow um, issues token to better performing users. Urban Gardens, this is a second track that we are very, very happy to issue as a track for Ethereum. Um, 
again, if Turin is, yeah, it's, it's, it's following somehow the same fate as Detroit. Uh, Detroit is, uh, is the former capital of General, General Motors and suffered a huge crisis and high crime rates due from starting, I guess, from the 90s on. And now, uh, because of its thriving uh, urban garden, urban and, and community farming community, it's been, uh, the city of Detroit has been elected as a sort of green capital of the states. So the same, the, sa the same destiny is somehow shared by Turin. Turin is, is investing a lot on urban gardens, also because it's the cheapest way for the public administration to to somehow gentrify uh, dismissed areas instead of investing money in rebuilding and renovating, which has a high cost. Um, usually they give just destroy everything and make gardens that give to local association and cooperatives that start these urban and community farming projects all around town we have i guess up to 35 very active urban gardens so um, we've been studying these grassroots movement very in depth and um me personally, with the University of Turin and some other partners and startup, we are starting a project called UFARM. This is a project that aims at creating um, um, work and reward system for the community of urban gardens. For those of you who are not practical with it, you can basically join a urban garden by becoming a member. That means uh, paying a quota to the urban garden, going there, work, getting your um, vegetables, the product that the urban garden gives, and that's it. But if you want to go and work somewhere else, or if you want to go and buy somewhere else, basically you have to become a member of that particular association. So the, the movement is a grassroots movement and it's been uh, on a global scale, very disruptive, but on the small scale, it's not fluid, it's not liquid. It doesn't allow a disruptive mass participation. So it doesn't allow the uh, mid consumer, which is basically those people who can uh, lend maybe a couple of hours a week to this system, like by, for example, transporting um, assets from our urban garden to the other, um, the possibility to engage this system because you have to become a member, basically. And um, also, this closed and blinded system prevents uh, urban farming from having a uh, um, feedback on the local economy, so on the local circular economy. So what we are trying to do, we are coming up, we are developing an online uh, census where um, we can do initial onboarding for the Turin community of urban gardens, and of course it can be uh, repeated uh, on a global scale. And these census allow um, urban gardens to map their garden with a polygonal tool and compile basically all the basic informations without um, giving sensitive informations, of course, but at least it can give uh, the full profile of an urban garden, talking about production, uh, months of activity, assets, uh, presence of uh, sensors. Um, we're talking about sensors in the soil, so talking about um, humidity, uh, heat, uh, um, contaminants, um, and, uh, um, and, and chemicals, etc. So, um, what, we, what we are looking forward after um, we've been finishing this first um, census platform is to, um, giving the possibilities to the communities to create DAOs out of uh, registered urban gardens so that these DAOs can basically be checked in by the core participant of uh, urban gardens and they can maybe start issuing bounties at a local scale. Like for example, issuing bounties for um, 
beginning beginner use of uh, community farming like uh, digging and building uh, greenhouses etc another track has to deal with local governance so in these we will have the help of our local section of legal hackers torino which is basically um a collective of lawyers and uh, pardon of um, um, legal um, professionals that um, provide um, assistance and mentoring for token models etc every section of course it's it's a, it's a global it's a global movement and every section of course has different rules because the token model reception in italy is different from the token model reception in france and uh, as time goes by uh, we can see that also region um, by region we are having different uh, legislation about token models this is this is what I, I was referring to. Decentralization is happening digitally, but it's also happening politically. So regional uh, um, regions are taking back somehow uh, a, a bit of, of, of regulatory powers. So um, um, a few examples that we can provide here is uh, that we had one of the in, in, in Turin, there was the, there, there was one of the first projects uh, based on Ethereum that had to fork Ethereum. That was happening in 2016, I guess, and um, it's called the Food Chain. And uh, Food Chain basically does uh, in ingredients tracking for local producers. They started a partnership with a local administration that had to, because of a statutory um, rule, they had to know 100% their customer or where, the, 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 just for example, the gas should, would go to. So they basically had to create their um, proof of authority, blockchain, fork, etc. The good thing about local public administration, as I said before, is that they still provide basic services to the community, which is something that still we there's a long way for 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 crypto projects to kick into. And also, as I said, again, um, local public administration is way more flexible and receptive than the central government to new uh, economic uh, patterns. So here we come to the um, idea of micro DeFi. So DeFi. So the whole idea. I was also talking with Simona um, Pop yesterday and uh, Boris uh, Mann and Boris. Uh, I don't know who of you know Boris from ETH uh, Magicians. Boris was mentioning that I guess in Canada you can now basically stake uh, um, or buy equities from um, local stores. So somehow uh, we've been approaching this new system where uh, you can invest in local realities. That is something that um, comes of good use for, uh, for many blockchain and Ethereum projects. So uh, this is what we mean. Def uh, DeFi can be easily used to allow locally state capital customer to business um, this is also due to the fact that the payoff is diversified by the local engagement possibilities such as events vouchers and, um, and other kinds of engagement um, of course it applies to local nodes of productions of uh, services and of culture uh, production such as uh, venues, schools, uh, etc. Also, this is a system that somehow uh, resonates with um, the live peer transcoding staking system. Uh, 
uh, and we will make we will do uh, reference to the system which is open source you can go to the live peer github to have a look if you're interested in it basically is the whole idea of setting up a transcoder and receiving live peer tokens as a way to uh, um, raise your transcoder reputation and then redistributes the incomes that you make as a transcoders to the community of your uh, stakeholders, basically. Of course, we also have to talk about uh, quarantine coronavirus. Um, so there is something about um, countermeasures uh, for the pandemic and privacy. Um, I don't know how many of you are following the Italian news, which is basically the headlines concerning coronavirus right now. But um, the government has been hinting about uh, tracking uh, phones and um, making vaccination compulsory, which is a sort of dystopian uh, scenario. And um, there was recently a state-sponsored, uh, I wouldn't call it hackathon, but more of an of a, um, open call for ideas to um, counter the pandemic. And um, the results were a bit lame, in my opinion. The, the winner was an app that basically allowed uh, everyone to um be to have a direct feedback on their voice on the quality of your of their voice and give them a uh, uh, risk assessment on whether their voice could have been affected by coronavirus so this is total bs in in my because of course i can smoke 20 cigarettes and then uh, and then uh, Without having coronavirus, my voice is still not performing. Anyway, so there was actually uh, there were actually other projects that were offering, and, th and those were very 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 valid projects that um, um, somehow concerned um, peer to peer and Bluetooth technology that put together these two technology to help design uh, public health data system that didn't um, have this uh, invasion, this intrusion of states into citizens' privacy. Basically, the whole thing would work around the possibility of um, a responsive DAP that tracks the different Bluetooth in your proximity. And whenever one of the users is um, is diagnosed positive to coronavirus or to any other pandemic that uh, the illuminates the Illuminati will come up with. <laughs> Sorry for in dropping that. <laughs> um, he or she could basically um, ping all the other. So we are almost to the end. I would invite everyone to register to Ethereum. The QR code goes straight to the registration page where you can um, subscribe and redeem later your NFT uh, Mint Base uh, ticket which is also uh, useful for the final part of the hackathon where all the participants will have to vote quadratically the winner of, of, of Ethereum. We are indeed using quadratic voting to assess the main winner. This is a bit um, like the schedule of the virtual hackathon. Uh, it will start on Friday the 24th at 12 
uh, Central European time with the live stream. We will have Friday with opening talks and uh, workshops um, of different kinds. Just keep in touch with us and on our uh, Twitter for um, latest news. And, uh, and of course, there will be mentoring um, rooms. Saturday will mostly go to mentors and workshop and hackathons and uh, Sunday work and last submission at six o'clock in the evening. Also, I would like to mention that we will be uh, running a um, live stream which is 90% uh, decentralized because we are using our own live peer uh, transcoding full stack and uh, the um, channel is has been deployed on IPFS. These are our addresses, our GitHub, and thank you very much. If you have any question or uh, I'm sorry for my for my English, but it's been, you know, living in Italy for two years right now, it's uh, worsening my, <laughs> my language. Your English skill. is fine. <laughs> Don't have to worry about that. Thanks for the interesting talk and the work you guys do at Etern. Um, I know there was at least one question by Theo. Uh, Theo, are you here in the, in the live stream? If so, would you like to speak up and ask directly? I don't think he is, so I'm gonna read it to you. Yeah. Um, hi, Matteo, thanks for the great presentation so far. Uh, this is Theo from uh, GZ. What do you think is the best way forward after a hackathon has ended to ensure that a solution benefits a given local community? So right, right. So um, this is exactly what we've been trying to design. So I guess that without having a receptor locally that could could use the material and the sources coming out of the hackathon is a bit is a bit of a, of, of a pity of a waste of, of, of work etc so this is why we we are strictly collaborating with the University of Turin and their ethereum based project so we are trying to basically, focus everything on uh, on a local community of devs of foundations that are taking care of um, these different aspects such as smart mobility and um, urban farming governance etc in order to provide them with the tools also it's good to um, to directly respond to theo it's good to um focus your hack and identify your hack where you know that there's a local test lab like you wouldn't do um you wouldn't try to develop something where you know there is no um catch local catch somehow so in the case of for example of urban guard this is this is the reason why we came up with the suggestion because we know the reality in Turin, we say, guys, this is what could actually, the, our soil is fertile for these kind of ideas because there, it's in the public agenda. So if you want to hack on that, there might be high chances of in public investments in that, private in, investments in that. And for sure, even if there's no investments, there is grassroots movements like happening. So this is all about like connecting to the, um, to the local hooks first. So if I understand correctly, the idea is to essentially um, generate your ideas at the hackathon or the project that you're working on in a way that it allows you to interface with the local community and not build something that is detached, but to have something that somebody can pick up and work with, somebody that you can work with after the hackathon. And um, essentially, as you said, something that the local community really needs 
Right, right. Um, also, I think that it's a bit, it's it's easier to come up with MVPs once you have like communities which are not hundred percent decentralized and nomadic and interact based on different fuses, for example, in different time zones, different um, you know different habits, etc. But they actually meet every week and do stuff, whether they are digitally literate or not. Of course, um, this is now this is an exception. Uh, urban gardening community is highly digitalized uh, as, a, as a paradox there's a there's a high percentage of um, programmers doing um, urban farming etc so it's it's a really cool environment in my opinion and um, yeah sorry uh, I think I forgot the question the question was Kai sorry um, I think you answered the question pretty okay. much already unless Theo who is reading is posting a follow-up for that. He also had another question um, yep. related to DAOs. I'm going to read that again so the live stream hears it. Uh, since you've mentioned DAOs and other decentralized governance solutions, how should a solution's user interface look like to be sufficiently inclusive to represent the local community? Uh, sorry, the sound went, well, um, dropped a little uh, bit. Can you repeat? Apologies. So regarding the user's interface for any solution that you might build regarding DAOs and decentralized governance, how does that look like to be sufficiently inclusive? Right. Okay. This is a this is this is a big hack question. To be honest, uh, uh, I've been talking like in the last months with almost anyone from Autark to Aragon and um, and other. Uh, um, DAO um, based um, groups and, and um, yeah I think that the possibilities of DAOs are still very theoretical I mean it's we are at the very constitutional structure of DAOs so we are purely at the level of uh, like anagraphically connect people and that's it so what about interaction uh, I think that Autark has a few nice plugins right now that could be explored um, to make DAOs highly inclusive. Good question. Well, it well, it, it's all about it's all about like I mean, um, it's all about giving. If if you want to make things, this is my uh, opinion as a profane as a as a as a non-technical person. But if you want to make things easier on one side, then you have to give in to something else uh, in terms of privacy, in terms of security, etc. cetera. So, um, um, in terms of using mainnet or using a fork uh, proof of authority where you know your, your, your nodes, etc. I believe that, um, I'm, a, I'm, also, I'm not a maximalist. I'm, 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 I would love to be a maximalist, but I, I'm more of a diplomatic um, thinker. And I think that sometimes you can like uh, sacrifice certain aspects to at least create a toy that people can start playing with, with few basic features that they can understand and they, that at least can satisfy one need in their group. And once you have that, you can scale up to levels of complexities that require further reading and uh, education. I think that echoes very well with what was said before. And I think that's also why your talk fit in really well, because on the one side, you have those people who say, hey, we need global total adoption or this isn't anything. But you can also do local communities and you can also strengthen these uh, initiatives with tools that help them out. So it doesn't have to be all or nothing. At the same time, decentralization is not really yes or no. It's a spectrum and you can sacrifice some if you allow elderly people, if you allow technologically not as uh, theme people to use it and to uh, to be helped by the tool. Absolutely, absolutely. But I, I don't. I mean, I, I, I understand those people's claims when they say decentralization has to to happen globally or not. But still, I, I wonder how do they live their ordinary life and uh, how much if 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 um, asked 
how much they would uh, uh, say they live on their territory like where do they get their grocery where do they get their basic services how do they interact with the territory they have around does it make a difference in their quality of life or not or they can live in the sahara as well as in manhattan regardless of gentrification availability of um, even internet providers like we are still talking about decentralization but we are still relying on internet providers which are corporate in most cases i don't know if uh, i don't know if there are some projects we for decentralizing the stakeholding of an internet provider for example so that the crypto community can can basically own stakes of the of the of their of their internet provider but still you rely heavily on your local uh, market and uh, i think it's important to if you want to happen if you want decentralization to happen globally it needs test labs which can be successful locally absolutely i agree with you 